doesn't matter whether you believe in global warming or not, it's clear that the planet is overpopulated and resources will become increasingly tighter and you've got to really, as a designer, think about why you're making anything new at all. There's a lot of talk about sustainability at the moment and um, you know, it's certainly a subject which comes up on, on, the, on the news and you know, in current affairs stories all the time. But I think in the design world it's been something which has been slightly mysterious as how you deal with it. And um, I'd noted in the last two or three fairs uh, in Milan there was very few people um, actually dealing with the subject in a serious kind of way. A lot of students um, projects and a lot of talk but very little action. Arte is a company founded by Alvar Alte, the Finnish architect in the, in the 30s. Arte the Pavilion is an is a, um, attempt to get closer to architecture again because I think this company is unique by its um, direct connection with, with an architect. Um, I'd been looking at this material really with a view of making it into furniture but it didn't have the right qualities for furniture but it definitely had um, an interesting history and, and uh, it was a, a useful material. It's made out of recycled paper and, and from the Finnish paper industry. Finnish paper is one of the biggest um, industries in Finland if not the, the biggest one and uh, they have a lot of um, pre-consumer waste so stuff that, that comes from their own production line. So th this company make sticky labels and they make also paper products and the combination of the plastic um, waste and the paper waste is extruded into these profiles. And so the whole building is made out of one material. So it's probably the biggest bit of um, recycled paper in the world, it's sort of 38 tonnes of the stuff. This project here, which is called Second Cycle, is part of our reflection on how Artex should sit within that whole conversation of sustainability. Artex is kind of distinctive because it's been making the same product range in the same factory from the same wood as maybe uh, since 1927. And so in that context, we know that the furniture is very long-lasting. We know that the forest where the, the wood was sourced is still in existence. We know um, where the glues come from and the paints come from and the rest of it. So we're in a, a reasonably good um, position to think about what that means in terms of a new way of thinking that the company can have in the future. This project is really about trying to say that ultimately the best form of sustainability is probably not to design or make anything new at all. This is something obviously that happens naturally through the second-hand market but I think we're in a position to repair things, we're in a position to buy back the same things that we make, which is quite a rare situation to be in. So the message from us is that we would like to make furniture which is longer lasting and that we're also prepared to buy back our old production when you're bored of it um, because we believe that it'll be more valuable old than it is new. I don't think all my ideas obviously are not sustainable. I don't think it's a very comfortable situation to be um, talking uh, uh, about this subject and at the same time selling lots of new things to rich people you know so it's a compromised position but like I say everybody's got to try and um, work out what their stance is on on that agenda because it, it will become increasingly um, important and increasingly a big deal. My, my father um, has always been um, keen to make a, a minimal Impact. I mean, so it comes back, you know, comes from, I guess, the, the, the 60s, you know, the, the, the first, the hippie movement and the rest of that. So, but for me, it's, it's sort of deeply ingrained and I, and I probably went off that agenda quite a lot and have now come back to it with a renewed vigour. Yeah? What would be my big ambitious project? Well, I think, you know, if I could think of a good way of um, purifying water, it might go quite a long way. It'd be a design and industry project. It'd be, you know, science, design and, and technology. You know, it'd be about manufacturing. It'd be about, about you know, physics and, and chemistry, really. And, you know, those, those are the more interesting projects when you're actually collaborating with people that are complementary rather than, 
you know, lots of designers all doing the same thing. You know, you know a lot of wars will be about water coming up and the need for, for desalinated water or, or, or pure drinking water can have a massive impact. It's partly to do with, the, with a, a, a trip I made to um, Tanzania um, and Zambia a few years back when I was at Habitat where um, we were tr working with a, a basket making community in a very remote part of, um, of Africa and um, it was clear that you know design was one thing but there were much more urgent needs and just trying to get a well dug for them was just such a, a big and complex project really. and so you know it did get me slightly more interested in what design should really be doing you know I thought just designing some baskets didn't really seem to be ultimately the, the best way of, of, of working in that situation. I think it could make a great chicken shed, you know, <laughs> it could make a great house, it could make all kinds of things. It would make a, a fabulous artist studio really, it's, you know, it's got this light coming in and it's, um, it's a, a ver very open construction. Yeah, maybe. I'd quite like it as my own studio, actually.